from 65 cents down to 41 cents in just days. What is going on with Phantom? Will it continue to plummet? And is there any support that can come in? More importantly, what am I doing in the market? Will I be buying this dip or am I just completely wrong on this project? <coughs> Man, cryptocurrencies take a turn for the red. The last two weeks have seen red come back into the crypto market after a very positive January and start to 2023. Bitcoin has dropped 5% this week. We've also seen Phantom plummet from 65 cents down to 41. What is going on? Where can support come in? It seems like it's just giving up all the gains it initially had. We're going to break that down and a lot more. Smash up the likes. Don't forget to subscribe. As always, check out the links in the description. If you're going to buy any of these cryptos, if you're looking to buy the dip, if you're looking to trade, buy it and BitGet are the two exchanges I personally use to trade they do support the channel if you use those links those are affiliate links check them out links in the description phantom has had a huge move up here guys i think it's very important to always zoom out in the panic moments right we know that phantom had an incredible move just literally at the start of the year let's just go back to the first of january here we opened up at a low of 19 cents on phantom now of course you've run up to 65 and then you've called off and this is where a lot of people start to get confused about what is going on is this now suddenly overnight a bad project just because it's fallen from 65 down to where we're at now at 41 no not necessarily at all why why is it that you expect things just to move in a parabolic way all the time that's not healthy what was i screaming from the rooftops this whole move wait for a pullback guys wait for a pullback wait for a pullback it's healthy if we see a pullback let's build some scaffolding i just keep repeating myself and if you're new to crypto that's fine it's gonna take you some time to adjust to get used to the fomo but if you've been in crypto for at least six months and you're still falling for the fact that projects just go straight to the moon and do not stop at go and like they just off they go that's wrong right you know that they pull back you should be buying from position of strengths and what can we see here test back into the daily ema ribbon this is a project that has been running insane ever since the new year I mean, if we just take a crude measurement here up to the peaks we're talking 230 percent guys and if you look at where we're at now yes it's a big fall relatively for those that fomoed in and bought in the 60s but you're still up 114 percent in five weeks in five weeks where are you getting that and this is the reason you invest in good altcoins and for those panicking you were the ones that were buying in this period and this is an important lesson for everybody what gave you the confidence to buy so extended from any support you're so extended from any support as soon as this move set off apart from if you bought at this point here when it came back to test the 30 cent mark or when it came back to test the 38 these are better buys these micro buys here and obviously a bit more of a macro one here when you come test your email ribbon but if you're chasing at the peak of the green candles i, I don't know what to suggest to you like you're asking for trouble right you, you're jumping in the shower you're gonna get wet that's gonna be a painful experience right there so for now we need to say okay where is the support and so far we're just testing our ema ribbon so on the daily chart there is not room for concern on the daily chart and i said throughout this thing that i'm being patient i'm not buying i'm not buying i'm not buying at these levels i will be nibbling a little bit more now i've got to be careful when i say that because i won't be going ham i've already got enough in my portfolio i'm doing this kind of a bit out of greed just to buy a little bit more i've already had the opportunity to to have more than enough phantom in my portfolio but i will nibble just a tiny bit to make sure i don't have any fomo and that's another tip if you find yourself fomoing in and wanting to buy more and more just nibble just a little nibble just reminds the brain yep i bought something i do this with stocks i do this with cryptos i do it all the time i just nibble a little bit and then i can forget about it so this is an important level this ema ribbon beyond this ema ribbon you have to look at 38 cents and that's right at the bottom of the ema ribbon and potentially getting close to losing the ema ribbon that's the key level of support from this region as well 38 cents we're not far from that now that would be nice level of support if we lose that things can get much more painful and the reason i say that is now coming up to a larger time frame let's zoom out to the weekly time frame this is where it gets a little bit worrying last week you can see we had a crazy powerful week 15 16 percent up here and we closed that candle at 56 cents above our ema ribbon now, what, would you, what you would have wanted to see in order to continue this move is a nice volume green candle, a confirmation candle. Again, this doesn't make sense. Ejars.uk forward slash TA. We go for all these different types of candlesticks. But what are you seeing right here? What is this on the weekly chart you're seeing right now? This is a bearish engulfing candle. It's a huge red flag, literally red candle, right? It's a huge red flag and you guys cannot ignore this. We've broken through and this ultimately could just be a fake out. 
Now, let's remind you, historically, where have we seen these kind of things before? On the Phantom chart, you didn't get it on this occasion, but if I show you on the Bitcoin chart, the exact same thing, weekly MA ribbon, what happened here? Boom, we broke the weekly MA ribbon, we spent one week just slightly above it, but in a red candle, another big red candle and thrown straight back to the downside. And look at that on Bitcoin, the exact same thing. We didn't even get above our weekly MA ribbon on Bitcoin, we're getting rejected, and this is what I was saying this whole time. This is a bear market rally. Until we reclaim this EMA ribbon, which Phantom nearly did, but hasn't quite done. We're not out of the woods. We're still in the grasp of the bears. I want everybody to understand that. That doesn't mean I'm going to sit on the sidelines and be a bear and say, oh, I'm not going to be in the market. No, I'm firmly in the market. I've kept my conviction. I'm in the market. I'll wait for pullbacks. I'll continue to buy tips. Nothing's changed. I think we're in a far better situation than we were when Bitcoin was at 15,500. I retain that belief and I, I continue to feel more confident about the wider global markets and the crypto market since then. Of course, this week has seen SEC Gary Gensler come after the staking. We've covered that off in yesterday's video and the day before. Go watch those and get familiar with what's going on. It's not that you want to ignore it, but I don't think it's that big a deal, right? But markets are starting to respond to news in the bullish case and in the bearish case. These were kind of news pieces which weren't affecting the markets during the bear market. We were so beaten up at 15,500 that apart from the FTX collapse, nothing else was going to annoy, annoy us last year. We had everything. We had inflation, Russia, Ukraine. We had all sorts of things going on in Taiwan and China. We had all the issues uh, in terms of FTX, Celsius, BlockFi, but we just couldn't fall anymore. It was that, that was how close we were to that bottom. But now we're starting to see that because froth came back in the market, we can see more drastic responses to the things like the SEC and, and their banning of Kraken staking. OK, and finding them as well. Let's take a look at the dollar index as well. Important to look at the dollar index. And this is where you're seeing where some of the pain is, right? The dollar index has managed for the first time since going back to October, two positive weeks in a row. And they're not just normal weeks. That's a 1% week and a 0.6% week. Those are big green candles for the dollar index relatively. And it's trying to test its EMA ribbon. And this is where the battle is going to occur. Two things are going to try to happen right now. The dollar index wants to do this. And if the dollar index can do that, then guess what's going to happen to Bitcoin? The opposite, right? And at the same time as the dollar index is breaking its weekly EMA ribbon, Bitcoin could get rejected. Now, the opposite is Bitcoin managing to reclaim the EMA ribbon, the step up with a higher low, right? Curl over like this and push back up and the dollar index get rejected from its weekly EMA ribbon. So instead of the dollar index pushing up there, can the dollar index instead get sent back down to the downside, okay? That's what we're looking out for here, is we need to see the dollar index rejected from this EMA ribbon. We had a nice extended move to the downside of the weekly. It's now back testing it, but we do not want it to claim the EMA ribbon because look what's happening. Can you notice on the EMA ribbon what's happening? You're starting to see it flipping. That is where the lighter colored yellow lines cross over the darker color red ones. When that happens, that normally exists that normally sets up for extended powerful move. Look at this bullish situation. We're in a bearish trend, i.e. the red line's at the top, and then we flipped it so that the red line was at the bottom. And then look, big move on the dollar index. We want to do the opposite right now. We want the yellow line to go to the bottom and have a big extended move to the downside. Why is that important, you say? Well, look at this. Every time the dollar index has gone for a major weekly correction, and we've had some of it already, Bitcoin has benefited. Bitcoin has gone on a crazy run, okay? Similarly, Dollar index has been bad for the last couple of months. Bitcoin has recovered from 15,000 all the way up to 24. Big difference. If this can continue, if it can get rejected from its EMA ribbon, just like we've done here in this period, and continue its move to the downside, that could show that risk is continuing to rotate on and crypto and risk on stocks can benefit. Now, it's important to note that what we're seeing here in terms of the pain in the market is not just crypto related. I mean, if you take a look at the weekly chart here on the S&P, S&P has registered a red week this week, 1%. If you look at the NASDAQ, registered a decent red week to the downside of 2%. So for Bitcoin to be down 5% on this week, it's not crazy, particularly given what uh, Gary Gensler has been up to over at the SEC. That now brings us up to what's going on next week. Well, first of all, you can see Fear and Greed Index is now sitting at 40, uh, 49, which is interesting, right? Just days ago, we were sitting at 61. So it's showing that we were in greed and now we're back into that neutral territory. So we're getting rid of some of that froth. I was telling you guys, I was making a lot of videos saying, guys, there's a lot of froth in this market. It feels like a, a mini bull market. Everybody's just chasing after every little project. Project's having crazy days. What is going on? So it's good. Wipe that out. Get back to more sensible levels. Regroup on better footing and then get ready for your next leg up. Like I like to call it, build scaffolding. Very, very important to build scaffolding. That brings us on to the 14th, which is three days from now. It's on the Tuesday. And that is going to be 
our much anticipated CPI, or some people call it CPI reading. Okay, so this is your CPI reading, 8.30 EST. We're going to get a month on month and year over year figures. It's going to be very important. We will be covering it off together. I will live stream it. Make sure you've subscribed. Make sure you got the bell notification on because sometimes YouTube does not notify and this is going to move markets. This is going to be really, really important for us to look at and we will cover it off. Important to remember, this is the first time they're giving CPI on the different measurements. So we'll go through that on the day so we understand exactly what's going on. Quick look at the Fed rate monitor tool and you can see here that markets still haven't moved much. You can see now 10% almost is creeping in, pricing a 50 basis point rate hike. This position will further increase if we miss on CPI. If we get a good meet on expectations of CPI, expect that the market will just keep pricing in 25 basis points for the next meeting, which is on March the 22nd. Still quite a while before the next FOMC meeting, but it's important to monitor this to see what a market's pricing in. And that's why we're seeing a bit of redness last week, because the market has decided slightly here, up to 9-10%, that we're going to pricing the chance that there could be 50 basis points. What does this then mean for Phantom? Where are we heading from here? What's the support? What's my game plan? And what's my game plan for other altcoins? Well, first, I want to put this chart up because a lot of people are getting confused about what's just occurred, right? Now, I know those that got burnt got burnt, but look at where we're at right here. This is Phantom to BTC, not Phantom to US dollar. This is the Phantom to Bitcoin chart. And if you look at the Phantom to Bitcoin chart, from the new year, Phantom outperformed Bitcoin to the peak 134%. So versus the dollar, you made 230%. But versus any money you kept in Bitcoin, you made 130%. So Bitcoin was running, but this ran 113% more than Bitcoin. Now, after the pullback, okay, after this pullback, you're seeing that you're still 65% better performance by being in Phantom over the last five, six weeks than you would have been in Bitcoin. And this is why you want a healthy portfolio. There's a lot of Bitcoin maximists out there that just believe in Bitcoin. And look, to every extent, Bitcoin and Ethereum are the safest. And I'll put Bitcoin like leading miles at the front. I think everybody knows this. Then you've got Ethereum, right, in terms of because the CFTC has deemed it a security, sorry, a commodity, but now Gary Gensler is trying to come after it. And then you've got the rest, right? And I treat all the rest of altcoins like uh, kind of VC capital, like startups. I always treat it like that. I invest in a bunch and I fully expect that some of them will not survive. But this is why you want to invest in them because when they run, they do go crazy, particularly the good ones. And that's why our job is to identify the good ones. So important that we zoom out and give perspective what's going on. A lot of people are like, why is Phantom dropping so much? It's dropping because you had an insane run-up. I mean, if we were to take the Fibonacci ratio, you can see here, you're just coming down to this level. So maybe it want to come down to these kinds of levels around that level here versus BTC and then look for a bounce. Let's do a similar thing on the normal chart. And again, if you want to know how to use these guys, the jars.uk forward slash TA, and you can see that you're, bound, you're trying now to bounce to the 0.5 level. If you can't, you need to retrace down to the Fibonacci ratio, which is your golden ratio, 0.618 to 0.65, which gives you 37 cents to 35 cents. Again, I wouldn't rule these levels out. And what did I say from a horizontal support level? Let me just pop off this, let's, let's just layer on now our, our lines, okay? What did I say? 38 cents right? Bang on where that is. And that's where our horizontal support is. That is where our daily EMA ribbon ends. And those are the levels I'll be looking to. Now, here's what's also interesting on the phantom chart, just to make sure we've been completely thorough in our analysis. I'm worried about this weekly EMA uh, bearish engulfing candle. Let's not ignore that. That's a horrible candle. We do not want to see that. And also the fact that Bitcoin's getting rejected from its EMA ribbon. So please be aware, we could be heading for some more pain. Don't think this is the only pain. We can have a couple of weeks of pain here. But what's important is we have to, on Bitcoin, this chart here on Bitcoin and on all the altcoins, which will follow obviously Bitcoin, form a higher low. We do not want to be falling down to the bottom of this candle back in that 17,000 range. Turn around before then. Create any low here at 19 and a half, at 20 if you can, at even 18,700 if you can, and rotate and work your way back up. Create a higher low. Make sure the bulls step back in because the bears are pushing now. They're giving their final push. We need to re be able to react and take that chart back again. OK, very important. So then coming back onto Phantom, I wanted to show you the Bollinger Band. thing. So you can see after that crazy move, it looked like we were going to break our Bollinger Band. And to all intents and purposes, we did last week. But now we've been thrown back into this structure, which then brings you back to the middle line of the Bollinger Band, which brings you to 26 cents. So by no means am I saying 26 cents is where we're heading right now. I've just shown you that I'm looking at I look at things step by step and we've got to take it uh, level by level. But if you look at this daily chart, 38 cents, right, we've already passed the middle of our Bollinger Band on the daily chart. And then you're looking at the bottom of the Bollinger Band, which is going to meet you at around here, that 38 cents mark. If we lose that, then I look at 30, then I look at 24. 
Okay, so that's that's there, 38, 30, and 24. But if this starts to happen, that means Bitcoin is really, really struggling. So there you have it, guys. After a crazy start to 2023, finally, we're getting a little bit of a reality check. Finally, the bears are waking up and trying to take back some of their hard-earned effort over 2022, keeping the markets in decline. But this is healthy. I'm not panicking. I'm not worried. This is a healthy pullback. What we were seeing those red couple of days is not a pullback. A pullback is properly getting back to your EMA ribbon and seeing what's happening. Obviously, the worrying thing is that weekly chart, that weekly EMA ribbon, the fact that we weren't able to break it or move into some sideways action. We've now got to step up, let the bears have their moment, wait for them to tire out, step in, create that higher low and work our way out of this mess. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Big week coming up with the CPI. Make sure you're tuned in. Smash up likes. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out the TA course and I'll see you in the next one.